Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian. Today I have another haul for all of you. This time I'm going to be going over some of the vintage things I acquired sort of in the second half of last year and over the sort of holiday period here. A lot of these things I'm going to be showing you today were gifts actually from my family over the holiday season. So I'm really just being super crass and showing off my presence, but it's not like that's unusual here on YouTube, weirdly enough. But a few of these things I did purchase at the end, sort of last half of last year. Uh, as I said in a video last, I think it was like the end of last summer, I haven't been buying uh, as much vintage online as I used to in years past, just due to having a different sort of income situation. Um, so I haven't been able to collect as ferociously as I have in the years past, but I have picked up a couple of really nice things that I wanted to show you guys. Just try and keep you, you know, updated on my collection because I like to play show and tell. So let's jump right on in. The first item I have to show you today is this exaggerated little so well, not little, large saucer hat here. This is actually strips of wool sewn onto a clear or like transparent black horsehair braid, um, probably made of nylon, I assume. Although this hat says 100% wool, I think they're just counting the nylon braid in here as well. The little cap on the inside that holds it onto your head, if you can see how that's done is 100% wool. This is a hat designed by Jody G for Sylvia of St. Louis, made in the USA. Um, I do believe, looking up that label, it seems the other hats are all look like 1980s hats to me, so I do believe this is a 1980s hat. I originally bought it thinking it might be 40s or 50s, because to me, this style of like dipped saucer hat looks very new look. Um, I'll try and put some images here of similar silhouettes of hats that were coming out in the like late 40s and early 50s. And so that's why I bought this because it looked very much that era to me. But it's actually a pleasant surprise to find it's an 80s hat. So it's almost a, um, as they say, 80s does 40s or 80s does 50s hat. And we all know how I like me some 80s does vintage here on this channel. I don't think you have to be a purist. If it looks 40s, I don't care if it's from 1984 or 1944, to be honest. Um, but to me, the fusion of vintage styling and elements with more modern things like maybe nylon horsehair braid and an exaggerated, you know, version of uh, a vintage shape. To me, that just rings very Blade Runner. <laughs> and so if you have been around here on the channel long, you know how much I love the original Blade Runner films styling, that very like film noir meets science fiction, but tinged with 80s, all that style wrapped together. I thought this hat just fit in very well with that description and I'm super happy to have it in my collection now. This one I think was $35 on Etsy, so I probably paid around $40 with shipping. And I think that's such a great deal. The hat's in really good shape. There's only one little place where the horsehair, horsehair braid here has broken up a little bit, but I just think this is like a crazy, exaggerated, you know, avant-garde piece. And I'm really happy to have it in my collection, even if it is a little bit extra. And another hat-related item I have to show you are these cute little hat pins. They're still on their original card. I do believe, unlike my last item from the 80s, these ones are actually from the 1950s, I would have to guess, or maybe the 60s, as late as the 60s, I should say. Um, they are ribbon hat hat pins, all-purpose pins made in Japan. These are just, of course, a like stiff wire like pin with a very pointed end and a pearl top on them. These you just use to stick in through your hat, scoop up a piece of hair and then back into the hat to hold your hat onto your head. I have shown how I wear my hats with pins before here on the channel in my wearing and collecting hats video. So I'll put a card up to that here because I still do get questions a lot of the time about how I keep my hats on my head. And these are the answer, hat pins, but they're more of a practical purchase and less of a necessarily fun purchase. So I put them on my wish list for the holiday season because I was like, I don't really want to buy those for myself, but if I received them as the gift, I would be happy. And I did. So I'm glad to have a few more hat pins in my rotation now. Now we're going to have to go kind of fast through these next few items because I have a lot of brooches to show you. And if we stop and I ramble on about every one of them, we'll be here for ages and ages, but I promise I will include close-ups of all of them as well. And the first brooch is this little brushed gold owl with garnet kind of red ruby little eyes here. This one is by the um, company Avon. I'm not really sure when this one is from. Could be the 60s, 70s, 80s. No idea, but I think it's very cute and I'm happy to have added it to my collection here. This one was a Christmas gift. Another gold toned brooch I have to show you is this one. I am thinking that this, this is kind of like a modernist, brutalist sort of style. To me, it looks very mid-century modern as well, but I'm thinking this is probably from the 1970s, this brooch. It doesn't have a mark on the back, so I can't look up like or date date it by a maker's mark. So I really have no idea. But again, I d it doesn't really matter exactly what date something is from for me. If I like it, if I feel like it fits the style of what I'm going for, that's enough for me. And I just really love modernist kind of pieces like this makes me feel, you know, it looks a little bit like something you should wear 
when you're going to Tomorrowland, Disneyland, and that's just goals for me. So I'm happy to have added this one to my collection. I have a lot of modernist silver tone brooches, but not as many in gold. So I'm happy to have this one now. This one was another Christmas gift and I'm happy to have received it. And from modernism to monstera leaves, um, I think that's what this plant is called, monstera. This like Swiss cheese leaf plant, you know which one I'm talking about. I've talked about this plant quite a lot here in my hauls over the years because I'm always collecting things in this sort of leaf shape. And this was a gift I received this last holiday season to add to my tropical leaf jewelry collection. This one is a lightweight sort of plastic material and the leaves are painted. And then it says in the back fitting, it says made in West Germany. So obviously this was made when Germany was still in two parts, um, unfortunately, but it is a very fun little tropical piece and I'm excited to wear it with my more jungle or adventure ready style outfits in the summertime. And another plastic like based brooch here. I'm not sure what that last one was made out of. It might be celluloid. It feels quite lightweight. This one definitely feels like celluloid to me. It looks like a lot of other faux ivory kind of carved ivory looking plastic pieces from the 30s or 40s. I'm assuming that's when this one was made. This one again has no maker's mark or anything to indicate anything on the back, but just like from looking at other pieces of jewelry in my many, many years of browsing jewelry on Etsy, I mean, <clears throat> research. It does seem like something that's probably from the late 30s or 40s to me. Um, I'm really happy to have this one because it's a lot larger than a lot of my other ivory celluloid pieces. And I do like a big, bold brooch. Um, I think this one can be worn all year round. Leaves seem pretty seasonless to me, although you won't see many of them in winter. In white, it seems to work. Um, so I'm happy to have added this one to my collection as well. A new sort of color in my vintage jewelry collecting and wardrobe are going to be these next few pieces in copper. Uh, this is kind of like a dark copper shade. I think these are actually just made of like pure copper because I have the other two from this set. This is two of four here. Um, are marked copper on the back. These ones have no markings on the back. These little butterfly ones are again, two of a set of four that seem to all come from one seller. This was a gift, but um, it, my mom keeps them often packaged in the same packaging that the Etsy sellers send things in when she gives me gifts for Christmas because um, a lot of Etsy sellers pack their things very nicely. And this is one of those cases. Uh, these ones are a little bit more Southwest sort of style, like stamped Southwestern kind of jewelry you often see in silver. These ones are a little bit more in that vein. It's not something I wear often, but you know, first time for everything. Uh, I'm adding copper in general to my jewelry wardrobe. So I'm happy to have started out with these fun bug or insect butterfly shaped brooches, because as we know, if you've been here on the channel a while, you know that I like bug themed jewelry, even though I'm afraid of insects and bugs in reality, I quite like bug or insect themed jewelry. But the other two copper bug brooches that came with that set were these two, a little butterfly and sort of a fly, I'm assuming is what this is supposed to be. Um, the fly is marked solid copper on the back and then the butterfly sort of shaped one is marked copper by bell. So these do seem to be solid copper. They're a little bit more my usual style. I quite like these ones. I'm excited to wear them. I actually already went on to Etsy and typed in um, copper leaf earring to try and find some that would match this. That way I could have earrings to wear with my now new copper brooches. You know how I like to have matchy matchy sets going on. It's not a very modern way to wear jewelry, but it is a very vintage thing to do with jewelry to have everything match. So I was able to actually find quite inexpensively some leaf earrings to match these. So those are in the mail on their way to me now, and I'm excited to wear this set all together when those arrive. Another brooch I actually received for Christmas was this Luxilite Berries Cherries little brooch that I have pinned onto my cardigan here today. This one is in lovely like sort of moon glow jewel toned berries or beads here with a slice of wood style little uh, resin or plastic backing. I can't talk. Um, these are a very popular style from Luxilite and in general the 1930s and 40s ones are actually very collectible so it's much easier to pick up reproduction ones of, of this kind of um, style. And Luxilite does beautiful ones. I have many in my collection and I'm always happy to add another. So I was happy to receive this one as a gift this Christmas. And then finally, the last brooch I have to show you today is going to be this sparkling rhinestone, like white or clear rhinestone and silver brooch. This one has no mark and it looks a lot newer to me than most of what I've shown you today. This one I'm thinking is probably from 1980s, 90s up to now. I have no idea exactly when this one was made, but it just looks a lot newer than everything else. The way the rhinestones are cut, the way the prongs are set on this piece, it just feels a lot newer to me. Um, but of course, I don't really care about era. I care about style. I have been looking for a moon brooch for a long time, but I didn't want one with like a face on it or anything like that. So this fulfills my moon and stars requirements without too much cheese. We know I like a little bit of cheesiness in my 
fashion, but not too much. And I think this fits the balance perfectly. Um, I actually wore this out already. I wore this on New Year's Eve with a black sweater and it provided just enough sparkle for my New Year's Eve look. Now I may be done talking about brooches, but I do still have a few more little jewelry pieces to show you, including these giant base metal dress clips with a sapphire colored rhinestone going on here. These are just the regular clamp style back dress clips that I've talked before here about on my channel. For those of you who've missed my rant about dress clips, I will put it up in a card here. Um, for those of you who are new to dress clips, I, I kind of got frustrated about them last year and made a whole video just all about dress clips. So feel free to check that out if you're new to this jewelry item. But of course, you can just clip them onto your dress, your hat, your bag, wherever you want. These little clip on guys here. And these ones are a nice large size too, but like on an evening gown, or like on a velvet dress, I think they'd be super pretty. These ones I think are from the 1930s perhaps. They seem to have just something about the weight of them and the like lack of quality of the base metal makes me feel like they might be from the 30s. Again, dress clips were only popular for a pretty short period of time from the 20s through the, like the mid 50s is when they really were in their heyday. So most dress clips are from that time range and these ones just feel a little bit more 30s as opposed to 40s to me with the sort of renaissance revival style going on here obviously this lovely sapphire color might come in handy for me now that i'm thinking about my ravenclaw lookbook now that we're into the new year i actually did buy these ones myself near the end of 2019 and the seller did mention that they had replaced the pearls on these so the pearls have been replaced but again this is not like it's fine jewelry even at the time it would have it would just be costume jewelry so i don't mind having a little bit of work having been done on them the pearls do look a little bit shiny and new you know when they're this close but from far away i think it's still give the same effect that they originally had so it's nice that they have been restored in that way and i just think they're very pretty and i'm happy to have added blue to my dress clip collection i do have two bracelets to show you today both sort of based on the book chain link kind of style design that's just the way the links are arranged in the back um, but i buy a lot of 60s and 70s probably is when these are from bracelets in this style. Uh, I have quite a few of them in my collection and I've shown some here on the channel before, I'm sure. But this one is in these little square links. It almost looks, they have like some filigree going on. It almost looks like Tudor or Renaissance inspired, which of course I'm always game for. I don't have a lot of bracelets with black in my collection. So I was really happy to receive this one as a Christmas present because although I wear a lot of black jewelry, I don't have a lot of black bracelets. So this will be really good to wear with all the black in my wardrobe. The other book chain bracelet I have to show you is this rather lovely fall themed one that I picked up while browsing Etsy in the fall of last year. Um, it's got feathers and large like maple leaves going on here with little turquoise and looks like brown. I, I can't tell if they're garnet or brown. They're so small rhinestones on there, but this is just a lovely chunky gold bracelet, which I always like, but in a fall theme and autumn themed things. I can rarely pass up. So I'm really glad I spotted this one on Etsy and was able to snap it up. I don't remember how much this one was, probably under $30. That's usually what I pay for bracelets. I try not to pay more than that just because I actually don't wear my bracelets a ton compared to other items in my jewelry wardrobe. I would say I wear brooches the most, bracelets second, and then necklaces actually the least. Um, so I try and not, not overspend accordingly. So like when it comes to, sometimes I'll see spectacular necklaces and it's just like, you're not gonna wear that. So I try not to buy necklaces, but I can get away with getting some bracelets and brooches, of course. Now as for some clothing items, I did go thrifting recently, but I didn't find very much for myself. Um, I was out shopping as a sort of like treat yourself thrifting trip with my little bit of Christmas money I got, um, but I didn't find very much for myself. I found a bunch for the shop actually, which was interesting. So this time I usually find a bunch of things for me and a few things to put in my Etsy shop. This time I found a few things for me and a bunch to put in my Etsy shop. So a big update to my Etsy shop Listings will be coming soon, probably in the end of the next month here. We'll see how much time I get with the Ravenclaw lookbook coming up too. We'll see, I'll try and make it work. But the few items I picked up for myself, I wanted to include in this haul as well, including this purple silk blouse here. This is another CLIO blouse. I actually have one of these in red that I thrifted recently. I'll include a clip of that one here. So here is that red version of this top. It's actually the exact same blouse, funny enough. But you know, I found I found them thrifting on different occasions and possibly at different thrift stores, but same exact blouse. This one is also 100% silk and just in a royal purple color. And I guess I'll just collect the rainbow of these, but I really like wearing them tied with high-waisted pencil skirts or cigarette pants. I think they look very pin-up-y when worn in that way. Uh, when not worn in that way, I wouldn't really, they don't appeal to me very much at all. But when I realized you could just tie them, it really changed everything. I might be changing the buttons out on these though, because I really don't like the square little sad plastic buttons they come with. I think like a rhinestone button might be more fun. So I might be switching up the buttons on both this one and the red one soon. This one was $5.99, but then 50% off of that. So this one was a lovely $3 for a silk blouse. And no, I can never pass that up. 
And speaking of deals on 100% silk blouses, this one is a lovely bow front blue silk blouse from the 1980s, I'm assuming. Definitely has a very 80s sleeve going on here, quite puffed, shoulder pad, the whole shebang. Um, a very like, you know, 80s workwear blouse, I suppose. This one is from Saks Fifth Avenue and is again 100% silk in this lovely little scalloped chevron up close. It's very, very pretty little subtle print in this silk fabric here. This one was $6.99, so $3.50. This one, I do wish the bow was either a little bit higher or a little bit lower. It seems to be an, an awkward length where the bow is. I wish it was up higher here on the neck, but you know, for $3.50 for 100% silk jewel tone shining sapphire blouse like this, which again, blue might be coming in handy for me once again. I don't know why the universe keeps helping me out when it comes to thrifting things that will work for my next lookbook, but I found a yellow silk blouse before I did the Gryffindor lookbook, and now I've found this blue one conveniently. So thank you, thrifting, you know, gods, for helping me out in my lookbooks here. Uh, I think this one might come in handy soon. Then the last item I picked up thrifting is actually a three item set. It is this three piece suit set that I found um, hanging in the sad, dusty dress, formal dress section at my local ARC thrift store was this Pendleton wool suit set. It came with both the blazer with a pencil skirt and with a pair of high-waisted trousers. Now, the trousers are way too short on me as of right now. I am going to be re-hemming the bottom of these because there is about an inch at least that I can let out. So I'm gonna try and eke out as much length from these as I can by re-hemming them. The whole set does need to go to the dry cleaner as well. And I'm really not sure if I want to keep the jacket. Let me know if you think it would be absolutely terrible of me to sell the jacket and keep the skirt and trousers because the skirt and the trousers fit and I love them and I will d definitely get used to them in my wardrobe. This is just not the right style of jacket for me. So I don't know really what to do. I know it feels terrible to split up the suit because it's so nice to find a three piece suit, but the jacket is just really not for me, but I would love to keep the other pieces. So let me know if I'm evil for even thinking about that in the comments below, but I just love this dark red color. Always love finding Pendleton. It's a nice quality um, brand and all of their items I've ever found are nice quality. And I found quite a lot of Pendleton this last thrifting trip, um, but this was the Pendleton I found for me and I'm definitely keeping the skirt and the trousers. I don't know if I want to keep the jacket just to keep the set together um, or if I want to maybe sell the jacket. I don't know. Let me know how terrible I would be, or if I should just hang on to the jacket for the next person this suit eventually goes to uh, in the world, basically. Um, I guess I can put it in the back of my closet for if I ever decide to sell the whole thing as one. Um, but for now, I'm excited to get use out of the dark red pencil skirt and high-waisted trousers. So those are the items I have been buying and receiving and bringing into my collection over the past few months and over this past holiday season and last thrifting trip. Do let me know what your best vintage find has been recently in the comments below. And thank you as always for tuning in today. I'll see you again soon. Bye.